Welcome everybody to 52 Living Ideas. Uh, I am one of your three co-hosts tonight. Uh, there is also, uh, we are joined by uh, Marlena Ma. She is, um, she practices Chinese medicine and uh, she's going to tell us a little bit, well, not just a little bit. She's going to tell us about Chinese medicine. Jing is also going to tell us how she used Chinese medicine um, to help her son. And so uh, both of those speakers are going to speak. So welcome. Uh, we just ask everybody to remain on mute until it's time for questions. So just a little logistics on how tonight's going to go. Uh, tonight, like I said, we're going to have Jing is going to speak first, followed by Mar Marlena, and then uh, we're going to have a period of question and answer and discussion. And if we have time, we will go into breakout rooms. If not, we will stay in the main room and do takeaways. So uh, with that being said, Jing, whenever you're ready. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, we are very excited uh, for this month's meeting. And I will share a quick slide. Can you see it? Okay. Yeah, so we our design. Okay. Yeah, so our design your life meeting have I, I think this is a fifth. So I think it's one pretty well. And last time unfortunately I couldn't make it. And I think um Chenna did a very great uh presentation. And Today, actually, I would like to focus on the body because I think there's a five. Um, five, uh, what do you call the kusha or something? <laughs> we will share later. Anyway, to go back to design your life, you know, this is kind of the chart I was um, working on. Jane, do you want to move huh? to slideshow? So that right now. It, it is. Uh, Can you see it? It's not. I can. We can see it, but it's not in full screen. Oh, I see. And you know what, uh, Jing? Are you on multiple screens right now? Yeah, yeah. I think that's the reason. Let me unplug it. Yeah. Yeah. The big screen usually make it smaller or something. I think when you share, you just have to make sure that the, it's in the slideshow is in that screen. Yeah, have to be. One second, let me. Oh. Okay. How we get that queued up? Um, How do I share now? Okay. I was just going to go into a little bit about a little bit of background. Okay, here. Can Becky set this chair just the application? So I don't see the sharing button now. Should be right there. No, you be on the right below. Okay, share screen. Share. Sorry, Joe, you can go ahead. Let me find the set it up at the meantime. Sure. Um, so uh, just to go over uh, tonight's program, uh, it will be focusing on a lot of uh, preventative medicine, uh, as well as a taking a holistic approach. Um, and I think that this is a very uh, important topic because a lot of times we all too often and uh, especially in Western medicine 
tend to look to medication uh, for our solutions uh, without necessarily considering um, a more holistic approach uh, to treating ourselves and a more natural approach, uh, which includes in, you know evaluating our environment. Actually, somebody that we've had here covered here in detail in the past uh, was na uh, his name Russell Ackoff, uh, who we've uh, is a well-known system thinker with the University of Pennsylvania. Uh, and he often would cover as to how to look at medicine and how to think about medicine in general. Um, and that we didn't necessarily take a preventative approach that the, the okay, so, uh, but I'll go back into that a little bit more later on. I think that that's taking a systems thinking approach is a Western way of thinking about it. But I think there's a lot of relationships between systems thinking and holistic medicine. So with that, uh, why don't we uh, just go back to Jane? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sorry about the technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, talking about, we will start with Design Your Life. I'm actually put together this chart. We had a hey, beginning. Uh-huh. Uh, just one more housekeeping note. If you go to slideshow. This one? Yeah, go. You go up um, F5, yeah. Oh no, it's going to do that thing again. Oh, All right, get out of it. Never mind. Never mind. Just go back to where you were. We'll just work with it. How do I go back? Maybe F5 back. again. Would I help? Go to end slideshow. I actually unplugged the. Now you go to it, go on top and just go to end slideshow. It's like the third. There you go. And then just share your screen again. And then you could just run it from that screen. Is it better now? Because I already. Well, right now everything. you're not sharing. So if you go ahead and share a screen. Uh, and. So like the one that says uh, presentation view, uh, not. Present yeah. View. So you're, you're looking for Microsoft PowerPoint view, not presenter view. Uh, well, that will <laughs> that'll yeah. work. Or you can go to yeah slideshow. That's okay. That 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 works. I think. That works. Yeah, the it, there we there go. you go. That's okay. yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> we got it. No worries. Okay. Yeah. So we were we were had this. Uh, design our life with three different things. And I'm trying to set my own goal at the beginning of the year, more leadership in different areas of the life, set up system more efficient and balanced priority. And I actually put together, oh, how do you go to the next one? Oh, here. Put together a graphic chart. You know, it shows how busy we all are. With health, we have to exercise, cook food, eat healthy, okay. take my kids to different activities and take supplement, take my mom to do different things. And also the relationship, family trip, you know, friends and work. It just keep us so busy. I actually end up after my Salt Lake City ski trip, which I missed last month's meeting, I actually got COVID. <laughs> and it really make me realize how important health is. That's the reason we had this meeting. Actually, I get about two weeks pretty bad. And it reminded me what uh, Chen, that last speech, talk about five koshas. And I was looking into it, talking about physical body, energy body, mind, emotional body, wisdom body, and bliss body. Actually, there are different interpretations about all these koshas but it's similar in many ways. And I realized the most basic part actually is physical. This is the foundation of everything else. And through my COVID healing process, which I didn't take any, that's the medicine. I tried to find a natural healing. I actually did a lot of research online and that's what I want to share with you today. 
our body is the temple of our soul. You know, a lot of time, like the group here, we are so focused on our mind, our thinking, our philosophies. Sometimes we forgot our body. A lot of time I found every time I got sick, usually it's just like I try to do too much. My mind just jumping forward. You know, my body cannot catch up. That's when I get sick. <laughs> I get one to ski trip, then I come back, get all the work done. I feel so powerful, but then I got sick. And also I want to share the journey I had for my son's eczema. It's take years for me to find a way to heal him. And I, we have seen so many skin doctors and now they, all they gave to us is this steroid cream. If you watch any of the videos on YouTube, you can see a lot of people share their own experience, how they have withdrawal symptom because of using this cream. And even so, my husband always said, go see the doctors. And I said, what the point? We already see so many skin doctors. All they do is this. They can't do anything else. What the point? And one time I even went back to China, go to Wuhan, go to the mountain to see a Chinese medicine doctor. That's right before COVID, where the COVID has come from. <laughs> so it's pretty funny The summer before we went there and they did all kinds of treatment for him. But as we all know later, you know, Chinese medicine, it doesn't cure you in the moment. It's not like Western doctor, they fix the symptom. It takes very short time. But if you want to treat the root cause, it takes time because when you get sick, it takes time too. It build up to that stage. Later on, I found this ADHD parents nutrition support group on Facebook. And my son said, it's, uh, it's all scam, but I still joined them. I pay the fee, I join them, I learned a lot about nutrition. Gluten-free, soy-free, you know, dairy-free, all this. I did a lot of cooking with all those stuff. I learned a lot of things. I actually learned how to read labels. And it's funny, one time I read, I look at the gums trying to buy for my kids, and I realized every single one of them have food coloring, red, blue, yellow. That's pretty bad for us. And they all have it. It's crazy. So I end up buying something from Whole Food. I have nothing of that, but they hate it. Nobody wants to eat the gum. So it just is. Then eventually I find naturopath doctor, my friend recommend, and it star seems to start to heal. And they remind me about the book, The Journey to the West. If I don't know if anybody else have learned it here. It's a story about the, the monk trying to go to the West to find the, the Buddhism. And there's three of the followers help him to go there. It reminds me how the health, searching for health is such a long journey. It's like the journey to the West. It also reminds me about the frog prince. prince. You have to kill thousands of frogs before you find the prince <laughs> because this is not easy road. You know, we have to, it's not direct to find the health. It takes a lot of effort. And I actually found this book called How Not to Die. And it's very good book. If And there's a talk on YouTube, we can check in. And the guy actually was shared how his grandma was diagnosed as he's going to die because of cancer or heart disease in a few months. But she ended up, went to another nutrition group or health training group. And she lived to 90s. So it showed us how limited our Western medicine is. And they don't believe our body have healing power as we you know, mentioned before, discussed before. And the reason we get so bad in health because of this whole food industry, this whole pharmaceutical companies, they control a lot of things. And we got lazy because the fast paced lifestyle and they don't cook anymore. And all the food is funny like, they we have this dairy soy gluten free diet. They said soy is bad for us. But the Asian people eat a lot of soy, soy bean curd, but they actually have the less breast cancer. So it's not soy that's bad for us. It's because the uh, bean curd they are pro they that's, those kind of permanent so uh, soy bean actually is good for us. So it's kind of like we have very limited understanding. And the funny thing they point out, Western people actually eat more soy than Asians. 
because if you read the label, you will find all the processed food has soy in it because there's the cheapest in filler for the processed food. They don't want to put other things. So they put all this genetic modified soy in all this processed food. Even if you go to Trader Joe, you read all these labels on the food, you will find it. So that's what I learned from this nutrition group. Read the labels, understand, and also most importantly, you have to cook. So it's the health start with cooking. It takes a lot of time. And make me realize why we, we didn't get healthy because cooking and eating together used to be so important as a family activities. Now we get so busy, we drive through, we eat fast food and we hardly sit down with family to eat together. And the most healthy food is whole and unprocessed food. That means we have to cook and they don't last. If you don't eat them, they will get bad. You have to buy fresh ones, cook again. It takes a lot of time. So as I mentioned, I get sick and I try not to take any antibiotic because I know it will kill all my good bacteria in my gut, not good for me. So I'm trying to use natural way to heal. And I, I did a lot of research. I drink lemon, honey, you know, ginger, all those kinds of soup. And also the turmeric milk, goat milk is boosting the immune system. And also my friend who actually quit her job as mechanical engineer, become a cleaner, and she did the cold plunge, actually help her get so much healthier. I think there's so many ways we have to learn to natural heal ourselves. So there's different way of natural healing. There's natural path, there's Chinese medicine. I want to share, you know, when I have COVID, I have the sinus, you know, blocked. And I listened to Dr. Eric Ger uh, Gerd. Anyway, so he mentioned about use this cellotol and use this nasal rinse. And I just use that for a few days and now cleared up. And also interestingly, kimchi juice. As gross as it sounds, <laughs> if you dilute the kimchi juice, and put in your nostril. They actually create good bacteria and they help to heal your, your um, sinus infection. So my husband think I'm crazy not to see doctor take antibiotic, but I insist doing my own research. And for headache, I actually find some pressure point I learned on, online with headache because I, I hardly take any, uh, Painkiller, because I think pain is a signal. Something is wrong with our body. Just like in the building is a fire alarm. Do we take out the battery because the fire alarm is on? They trying to tell you there's fire. So I believe the pain is a way to tell us something is wrong with our body. If we take painkiller, we just reprise the signal instead of finding a way to treat it then the fire will keep going. So that's my theory. So you can still take painkiller, just like when you take it, you realize something is wrong. There's the body trying to tell you, maybe you need to find a way to treat it. So then there's a, so I, there's natural path, there's acupuncture, Chinese medicine, and our body is so mysterious and we have so little knowledge about it. We have house, we know how to maintain our house. And, but our body, how much we know about, is all connected. There's all this pressure point. It comes nothing for us to stimulate our nerve system, keep it healthy, but we just don't know. I think the, it's important for us not to totally re rely on Western doctor, which is mostly sponsored by pharmaceutical company, their education. So they didn't have the education about health, about nutrition. So they can really help us. So we have to take back the control, our own health, not rely, blind rely on them. And I think one way is group learning about natural healing. That's why I invite my friend Melina to share her own expertise. Mine is totally <laughs> sidetracked. So she will share with us how we can integrate Chinese medicine in our daily life as one way of natural healing. So let's welcome Melina to do her presentation.
Thank you. Thank you again. I will try to share my screen here. Oh, I need someone to oh, hold on. You, you just came out and came back in. So thank I have you. to. Yeah, thank so you. I will do that right now. That's right. When I now share my screen, I get myself out of the meeting. experience uh, is very interesting. There are many ways we can take care of our own health. Uh, Mar Marlena, you should be able to share your screen now. I'll try. Thank you. I believe. Uh, uh, can made... you see my screen? Are you present? Are you present? I'm kind of. Let me see. Um, Maybe if you shut your video off, it might no, help. She's not frozen. I think she just needs to expand her screen. Uh, can you see my screen now? Yeah. Yeah. If you go to slideshow, go from the beginning. Yeah, that's the beginning. Right. No, yeah, you gotta... click, the, click the from the beginning uh, button up top. I did. Or from the uh, from the current slide, actually. Well, actually, it's from okay. So if you go, you see where file is on your far left hand side. I did actually on my slideshow. Let me go back. Come back. No, no, no! Don't do that. Just do you see your toolbar? Uh huh. And yeah, you see you that first thing that says it. from beginning. Uh, so I'm. I did it. Do you see um the one with my name? Yeah, yeah. You just need to make it in a slideshow mode so it's bigger. Right now it's small, it's with all the other things. Oh, okay. So I have to go back. It's like, uh, how do I make it in the... So that's what the that makes said. Under the file, there's from beginning that becomes slideshow mode. Right. Under the file on the left. Yeah, right under it. No, no, no. No, no, no. no. Right under it. Go back. Yeah, right under it, there's a triangle, green triangle. Yeah, yes, that's oh. what uh, I tried from beginning. Oh, oh. Still this. <laughs> so, still right. not so, the full screen, right? But it is just a mine, so it's a full screen, but uh, you still don't get to see it as so a full screen. I don't know. Um, so it hits, uh, okay, that's good. No. Nah. It, it, I think it's good now. It's good yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Um. So we can go. Yeah. Today, I'm uh, very glad that I have this opportunity to share this integrate acupuncture and Chinese medicine into everyday life. I'm Malena, uh, in Seattle, Washington, to talking about uh, acupuncture is actually part of Chinese medicine. So everybody know Chinese medicine has a thousand years of practice. It has its own concepts, uh, which we know part of it, but uh, probably you don't know all part of it. So today I just want to give some like a very basic, but then looking at of what is traditional Chinese medicine, um, it's not, Acupuncture is a part of it. Herb medicine is a part of it, but it's more than that. Uh, the basic uh, concepts, it's different than the Western medicine. Um, the, the one of the uh, concept is about vital energy that we call it qi is inside. We're talking about the flow of the qi inside the body. That's a very important concept. Another one is yin and yang. Certainly everyone know that from Tai Chi. 
in is talking about anything like color in dark, it, then it will be dark color. But if it's talking about woman is like in, and then if you have color, then um, we talk about dark color. And then it also, uh, if you're talking about the anything is like a bi collective um, that it's in, and then young is like a bright color or like a um, man is like young and then for our body we have yin and yang too. Um, another concept, very important concepts of Chinese medicine is the five elements. Uh, Chinese medicine is come talking about not just a human body, it's also universe. It take a looking of the universe and the four seasons our nature and the uh, earth and the person. So person is just like a very small part of the uh, our nature uh, in the universe. Five elements that uh, you can see it's either wood, hard to explain, I mean, wood, fire, earth, metal, and water. They represent how we uh, it used to reflect uh, um, five organs. We call it zangfu, five organs of inside the body. Uh, liver is uh, according to wood that spring is also for four seasons too. So, and then for fire, it's a heart. I mean, heart is like uh, not the brain, it's in Chinese medicine, heart is the one governing how we think. It's most important part of the human body. Uh, fire, it's also, we when we're talking about it, it's in the season, it's like a summer season too. Um, then those five uh, elements, they uh, go, you can see the purple circulation, that's the way they uh, interact with each other. The way going purple color, that's like uh, to uh, grow each other, but then they're also overcoming, over interacting each other. Um, like uh, if you have uh, labor in spring, if that one in spring grow too much, that one you really overcoming your spring, which is the earth. Um, so that is the way we have, uh, it's kind of a part of a treatment of Chinese medicine when we're looking at a person too. Uh, certainly everyone, um, probably everyone talking about uh, Chinese medicine is different than Western medicine. It is true. It is different in, some ways, uh, Chinese medicine it, um, is not really scientific uh, evidence based. It is coming from many years of practice from clinic, then they come to the uh, their uh, theories. So it is art of medicine and then also kind of philosophy, the thinking. It, take a holistic view, looking at the person as a whole whole person. It's the logic of it. That's how so many people when come to looking, listen to Chinese medicine, they really have a doubt if it's going to work or how it work because it's logic. If we are like an IT person, you really have, um, to looking at uh, the Chinese theory, unless you spend uh, some time to looking into it, it's probably not make a, that much sense. But if you really study it, then you, you will realize those uh, in logic, the logic behind it, um, you really have to adopt to it and then the way how it thinks. Um, yeah, like uh, Chinese medicine has some classic books that everybody follows. One of it is called the Yellow Emperor's Inner Classic, 
we call it a Huang Di Lei Jin. It's coming from thousands of years ago, but people today is like still so many people study it uh, for everyday life because it, it's a Chinese medicine book, but everyone really able to understand it. And then you can use it so many uh, talking about it uh, in the book, you can use it for, of, we can use it for our everyday um, life. It's uh, certainly talking about uh, health and then talking about the mind, our mind, the body and our mind too. And then uh, one thing it's uh, talking about the uh, peace and the empress bring about the energy flow, right? We're talking about the energy that vital qi flow. That is important inside our body. Um, so it's talking about self, oops, self care. It, it is talking about self care too. Then from, it is Chinese medicine, it is a medicine used for treat disease. There is a very popular uh, cult uh, from Sun Simiao, who is a very, um, we call it the god of the Chinese medicine. He is very good at formulas and the Chinese herbs. But he has a very famous popular thing that uh, says the best doctor, they really curse the illness that uh, when it's at the beginning or when it's uh, very small. So it, so focus on how important uh, the preventive care. Chinese medicine, uh, when we're talking about it, uh, uh, there are two parts, I would uh, uh, say it like this. So one is for preventive care. Another part is really for treat the disease. Uh, we have meditation, qigong, tai chi, those exercises, dietary therapy, and don't look into every day what you eat, right? And the feng shui, cosmology, those are talking about where you live and then how do you, like your everyday life, right? Um, you, these are all like a self-care or preventive care. And then, here is another part of Chinese medicine about treat the disease. We use acupuncture, herbal medicine, and body work. Body work is a Chinese massage called a twina. Uh, now, let's, let me talking about the treatment part of the Chinese medicine. And yes, right now, many people know acupuncture, mostly know okay, acupuncture can stop it. It works for pain, for all kinds of pain conditions. Uh, the acupuncture, how it works on the pain condition because it's regulate, uh, talking about regulate of the qi flow inside our body, the qi uh, vital energy, the way it flow, it's on many channels. Those channels are like uh, from our body, from the head to the feet, from feet to our hand, have all those channels, you can call it. There are 12 major channels and then there are two important, total 14 those channels. Um, another part is the uh, Maxa. Maxa is really with copying and the TTP. Um, sometimes when your Chinese medicine yeah. culture. Hello. Is someone. You can keep going, Marlena. Okay. Yeah. So acupuncture and Maxa. Maxa is the way we actually. Uh, for when we need to tonify, like someone have a cold, lots of cold inside the body, we will use the moxa that's to add in the head to uh, that area. This is the, the channels I'm talking about. Um, it's part of Chinese medicine theory. That's why how we doing the acupuncture. We do a acupuncture 
it's not sometimes you probably going to ask, oh, I have a shoulder pain. Why my doctor, <laughs> Chinese medicine doctor, needling me on the hand or on my feet, then it works. Um, if you're looking at all those uh, channels, right? Those channels look at the, um, go through the shoulder and then go to the hand. Those are by the hand has distal points. By many years of practice, um, Chinese medicine practitioners, they get to know all those, by all those channel, you give the needling on those uh, points on the hand. Because of the channel, it will affect, will work on your shoulder pains. That's something similar. How our organs inside we do have like a stomach pain, abdominal pain, and then sometimes we have kidney problem, right? But then your doctor will probably give you a little thing on your feet, uh, but it will help your functions of your kidney and then um, improve your function of your labors. That's the reason we have all those channels. Here is how, um, this one is spleen channel, one is stomach channel. Uh, they have many points on those channels. When your um, practitioner give you like acupuncture, it, it, this is how channel, they, we call it like a chi on the blood, flood in your channel, and then they all connect. They are all connected, so that way, even um, let's go on here. By those are L U is for lung, and then this is for liver, stomach, spleen, heart, uh, small intestine. This uh, um, bladder and the kidney and also triple open uh, burner, but you probably haven't heard of those triple open burner. Those are like for the pathway for the qi flows to, uh, for the qi and also the fluid uh, flow inside the body, gallbladder. So they have like a, a 24 hour clock. Sometimes we were talking about your doctor say, asking how uh, late do you sleep? Uh, especially for for nowadays, we sleep late. Uh, young students stay late, like uh, people at work stay late too. Um, but doctor practitioner probably will ask you, always ask you, oh, it's recommended you sleep before 11. That's because according to this 24 hour clock, one, two, three, that's our lever. Um, so uh, that means we recommend everyone to sleep by 11 because by like a 1, 2, 3 a.m., this is the timing of the labor time. That means the labor function working the most. That, that's a time. Um, it's very important. Labor has a very important uh, uh, it functions in Chinese medicine theory. It's a time that exchange the um, exchanging the essential stuff in your in our body. Then also we will know by the uh, heart, right? This heart eleven to one. We say okay, it's a good. Actually, taking um, naps. In Chinese medicine, we really uh, recommend everybody take a meditation or take a break um, uh, after the lunch hour. No matter it, probably only just 15 minutes or so. That way, it's just then you will get like a more full energy. Uh, probably it's through the uh, afternoon work. Um, it's important because this is like a heart. Uh, clock here, give it a break.
when you go into your Chinese medicine or acupuncture doctor's office, uh, if it's how to tell it's a good uh, doctor, you probably will have someone to do the diagnose uh, first, not just like uh, when you go in, put the needles on you, right? This from the many <laughs> thousands of years ago. This actually is a painting, um, a patient, one of our patients uh, made this painting for us because there never, never have a such painting exist before. But it's like uh, in traditional Chinese medicine, uh, there are four ways to do the diagnostic. It always has uh, inspection and the doctor, any smell, color, looking at your face color, the smell, and then also inquiry, pulse taking that and the palp palpitation. Those are very important um, because even sometimes patient, what they describe to you, their main complaint, probably not is they uh, they probably not able to tell exactly what is the root cause root cause of it by doing all those diagnoses then your Chinese pra medicine practitioner trying to find what is the uh, root cause right maybe patient can tell you some symptoms but then there are some main symptoms. There is like a secondary symptoms. Uh, the uh, uh, doctor with experience can tell from all those uh, um, through the diagnosis can tell what is the root cause. With knowing that the root cause, with the acupuncture part of the Chinese medicine, we are always trying to say sometimes we are not focused on your symptoms. Even you tell your doctor you have insomnia, you have back pain, you have your shoulder pain, then you feel you have fullness on your stomach. But by uh, through the diagnosis, then your practitioner may tell you, I'm focused on you as a whole. And then when now focus on your, sim I mean, they sometimes like uh, you probably asking, oh, can you help me with my nose problem? Then your doctor say probably I'm not treating you on that sometimes, but by like uh, focus on like the you as like a whole person, it will help on that symptoms. So, but by acupuncture itself has 364, uh, 14 channels and 365 points. Uh, it can do a lot of uh, stress relief and uh, certainly reduce the pain. Uh, it will improve the uh, uh, general health, improve your digestion. Uh, that way will improve your sleep too. There are much more we are talking about what acupuncture can help. Acupuncture has what again said, Earlier, um, um, it's probably not going to for you some acute pain. You say I just like uh, have a really pain, sciatic pain, and you will say you get a, a less pain or after two treatment or one treatment, you will feel much better. But most, uh, um, if you have a chronic problem, it takes a uh, longer to get better, but don't give up. At least when you go into uh, say your acupuncture or Chinese medicine, if you go into one, any one of them, you give them some, allow them some time, right? Try a few treatment to see if um, uh, you will feel better also before you change into another doctors. We do have patients come in um, when they describe their issue to us, they, they will say, oh, I see this acupuncture, I saw someone else, but then they didn't help. Uh, then we, uh, when, when we ask, so like uh, how many times you got treatment, uh, they told us uh, you, you they got one of acupuncture treatment, or like I take a herb once, 
didn't help, so then they just come to our office. Oh, we actually will every time we will say if you choose any one of them, give them allow some time to see the result. Uh, yes, acupuncture uh, works for sports injuries. It is, um, we do have people say mm, chiropractic, people to see um, sports injury doctors. We got to recommend from them. We have patients that are coming to us, uh, get to recommend from other doctors for these sports injuries. Acupuncture has more to um, help, uh, definitely for allergies, for all, like for all those autoimmune diseases, uh, something like uh, Parkinson disease, corn disease, um, those are really difficult. Uh, Western medicine sometimes they treat with the Western medicine taking drugs for years, but uh, finally have like a very a lot of side effects, then they will come to get recommended to see uh, taking Chinese herbs and with the acupuncture treatment. We got lots of those patients. I'm not saying like acupuncture can really get you recover, fully recover, but it can hope to improve or even slower that uh, um, uh, progress of the uh, disease. There's another group of uh, conditions uh, acupuncture works well to support. Uh, one is cancer patients. When cancer patients go through the chemo, um, acupuncture and the Chinese medicine uh, works well to hope the patient have a better uh, immune system and then digestion system. That way will make them stronger, able to undergo the surgery and the chemotherapy. Uh, another thing is acupuncture, yes, can help you with the pain too. A skin problem. Um, we do see lots of young people uh, like eczema or other thing coming to uh, get help. Uh, so the um, Chinese medicine, when we see those skin conditions, we know uh, our patients will say, yes, we got a steroid, but it's coming back, come back every year and, and then all getting worse. We, we will say, yeah, it's not like your Western medicine doctor don't know what they are doing. They know what they are doing, but they don't have other, they don't have a drugs can help you. This is the only way that they have it to help you right now. Uh, with Chinese medicine, we do have Chinese herb medicine with the acupuncture to help that. Uh, you will see, we're trying to focus on the root to, to treat the root problem, the skin condition, um, based on Chinese medicine theory, it, it's con related to lung system too. So um, we, we may not just treat your skin, uh, we are treating your lung system uh, in order to treat your skin problems. Uh, we do get acupuncture and uh, herb medicine treat much more uh, disease than what you can think. Um, why is like uh, many people with liver functional problem, kidney problem, when they go in to get an uh, uh, exam, right? Doctors say you don't have any issue. Sometimes doctors say you don't have any issues, so we cannot give you any drugs to help. But patient to complain, you say I don't have any issue, but I feel so pain and have all those uh, problems. So Chinese medicine is, uh, is a medicine that it's 
more focus on preventive. So even like uh, when you go uh, exam, you don't find anything, but you still feel painful at that area or like you have like a fullness in that area or sometimes you feel like you have problem with your urine or with, with your bowel movement. Chinese medicine can help with the acupuncture. And then also when people have like a really kidney failure, we do have patients with kidney failure and now waiting for the new kidney in those time, they they have many like issues like they cannot sleep insomnia has all other pains then when they come in to us we can acupuncture and chance medicine slowly can get them like have a better urine and then, then sleep more hours so those are uh, patients when they know they come over they know that's the option for them but more people, especially in, in the country like uh, uh, U.S. here, we are more like uh, depends on doctors to make decisions for us, right? Sometimes um, if you don't know there are alternative medicine you can, you can try, then you'll wait, you'll wait till like uh, uh, really like uh, even you don't find a way to help you, but it's good to, um, if you know the alternative medicine, that's a way you can try it early. Uh, it's always good to try it early. Another thing for Chinese medicine is good, is really good about a woman and a man health, especially for, uh, I mean, for all ages, right? Uh, for the women, young women, so many of them we saw because of the lifestyle changed a lot right now. They have those uh, uh, irregular period or all those issues about of their menstrual issues, so many. And uh, young people, they um, really don't know what to do. They take some... Um, medicine right uh, drugs it will cause their issue in future when they want to try to get a pregnant um so uh for your want to get a pregnant that is the time Chinese medicine herbs with acupuncture uh, can prepare you for it mostly speaking the issue are caused by um the cold, the body inside is cold by our lifestyle or the eating uh, pattern. Also, yeah, for men's health, there are um, Chinese medicine can help, uh, especially when you get in certain age too. Another, definitely another area is like a woman over 50 is, uh, when get this menopause uh, time, have all those half flush and emotional uh, insomnia, all those things so many people don't know, they can go get the help of um, Chinese medicine practitioners. So they have more, will have a much to help them have a much comfortable life. Don't have to suffer so much. Um, there are uh, for pains, fatigue, because the acupuncture can help with the give you more improve the energy, um, and then also for the COVID nineteen after we call it a post COVID nineteen issue, uh, have all those uh, brain foggy uh, like that, fatigue, tired. Uh, that is the uh, area acupuncture can help a lot. Some patients come in and say uh, they really worry about they cannot, after they got COVID, even COVID-19 recovered, but then they feel so tired that every day they can only, they lost their focus, like they cannot focus on their work that well. They are so worried about it. 
Um, but acupuncture is a way to hope. Chinese medicine towards with the um, herb and the acupuncture works to balance the hormone level, address digestive and uh, immune system, improve the energy level, will improve the quality of the life. The herb medicine, you can get the herb treatment as a part of extension of your acupuncture results. Uh, you know, in here in US, um, it, in China, normally, like if you want to get acupuncture treatment, probably a week, you will get like a three, four times, or even you, you can go to get acupuncture treatment every day. But here it's not the same. Here mostly you go like uh, twice a week uh, or you go once a week or once every other week. So herb medicine is really, you can, can extend that, uh, the result of your acupuncture uh, treatment. Part of Chinese medicine, herbs coming from the food. Herb and food are from the same origin. So many food we eat, uh, it has different properties. And some of those food, we use it as inside the Chinese herb medicine. Uh, here nested, uh, this is like from Huang Di Lei Jing, from very classic books. Uh, food has those uh, Han that's cold, hot, and neutral, or like a strengthen like a tonify, like a ginseng. Um, have a different uh, um, green or different like a meat have their own property. Uh, if we follow all those, that's how like, like a, for Chinese, <laughs> Chinese people, Asian people, they pretty much know it and. Then, uh, that's a way they can at home, they even know, okay, in the winter, we want to do some soup to help. Uh, in the fall, like uh, in the fall or in the summer, it's too hot, we will have some cool food to help. Um, they, that's why they have it in our daily life. Uh, earth medicine right now, it's not, we are talking about uh, raw herbs, right? You feel like uh, your Chinese practitioner, medicine practitioner give you raw herbs. You cook, you don't have that time to cook it and then smell bad. So now it's improved a lot. Um, it's in different format uh, because the advantage of the tech, uh, technology herbs nowadays they get concentrated and then put in granule then you just make it a cup of tea you get a bag of the granule you put in a cup of tea that works the same and then we we use that a lot getting the uh, very good result and you don't have the like smell of the house or you don't have to take the time to cook it and then also in capsules right um, that something you can um, take a dietary uh, herb supplement that works on like uh, some chronic problem that, that works too. So I do have some like um, raw herbs. Uh, if you can see those raw herbs, um, it, it's really like a dried, those Chinese herbs, but those are like some flower, some seeds, uh, those are dry like uh, uh, Chinese yam root. Uh, all those, mostly those, uh, <laughs> we, we eat those too, just like a fruit and others are from the same origin. So they are, they are uh, safe. And it's certainly like a US FDA has a, a, a certain regulation that if the herb have some side effects that they don't allow those herbs in the US. That's why there are some animal, like Chinese herb, like animal herbs, you won't see it in the US. 
All right, for the um, uh, anxiety because of the COVID-19 being so those three years, we see so many people with depression or anxiety uh, or stress. Um, there are some points at home uh, if we, uh, you, you can always wrap or like give pressure to those points to help you. There are like five points for anxiety. Uh, on the hand, right? And in, in the middle of your um, eyebrow, those are very easy points that you can um, put a pressure on it by yourself. And then this is the on the top of the head. This point is really strength. And uh, when you feel like you have no energy, the, you wrap on, put pressure on this points. It's really um, hope. Well, certainly those like when, when we use acupuncture on those uh, one, you will get like a stronger, um, uh, a strong, strong feeling and doesn't probably help you more. But when you don't have the acupuncture at home, those are some things, some points you can use it by yourself. Now again for the Chinese medicine, if we want to use it in our everyday life, right? It's not just a, a medicine for the treatment. It is also a medicine we can use our everyday life. It's talking about uh, balance. Balance is important in our diet, in our lifestyle, in our emotion environment, right? You get a proper nutrition, rest, exercises, and then um, that is very important for optimal health. Thank you very much for uh, listening to my sharing today. If you have any questions, uh, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Marlena. Can you stop sharing your screen? Yes. I'll try. It's, sorry, it just works slow. When I'm trying to um, stop sharing, you can, yeah, okay. there you go. Here we go. Uh, thank you, Marlena, and thank you, Jing. Um, so now we're going to have uh, question and answers. If you have any questions or comments, you can type exclamation point in the chat or raise your hand in Zoom. Um, so uh, while people are lining up, I just wanted to thank you again, Marlena, for a fascinating uh, presentation. Now. I have one quick question for the herbal part. Um, I know you were saying the capsules and the teas. Which do you, which would you recommend more? Either the capsules or the teas or herbal? I think she's frozen. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. I, we can if, hear you. You can hear me, right? Okay, that's good. Um, so if you're really like in, um, got to sick, Okay, if you really got sick, uh, that means when your Chinese medicine practitioner probably going to give you some um, raw herb to make tea, or they will give you some granule to make tea, because those are go or uh, help you. Those are stronger, actually, going to help you faster. But uh, for there are some chronic problems. Um, mm -hmm. like uh, or for self-care, right, or chronic problems, you probably will get it in capsule format. So that way it's it's mild. Normally when it's in capsule format, it's mild than other two formats. So they are different uh, format, but some will work quicker, stronger, but other uh, format just work more mild for general health. Thank you. Um, so up next, I have YJH followed by Joe, Carly, and Denise. Hello, good evening. Can I be heard? Yeah, we can hear you. 
Okay. Uh, I check. Uh, I check the speaker's background a little bit before the hand in, and I see she have like IT background. Is that true? Or I'm check the wrong person. No, you are not uh, uh, wrong. Yes, I do okay. have the IT background too. Yes. Okay. So, how do you think the like the new Chat GPT stuff or enhance the traditional Chinese medicine? Um, because that's you're talking in mean, you know, speak, you're talking about the logic behind, you talk about the problem solving approach uh, exists in the traditional Chinese medicine. So how do you how do you see those two can probably help each other? That's a very uh, interesting question. <laughs> um, yes, let me uh, trying to uh, trying to speak to what I think. Uh, yes, I do have the IT background. So chat GPT is a thing that uh, uh, I look into too. One of my friends uh, uh, talking about, uh, hey, there is a chat GPT. One thing we can use chat GPT to help um, people probably is like uh, uh, the way we can make it. Uh, if people asking what kind of symptoms they have right we can have kind of a chat gpt give the answer that uh for because chinese medicine is customized for uh, different person so then you some if someone mm, type in their symptoms if chat gpt if we can make some app like that to, to tell them what is the best way for them and then uh, that's the way probably uh, people will be, um, it will help individuals. That is the one way for the chat GPT and the Chinese medicine can working together. Um, because uh, an another thing is like so many times when we cannot share, there are lots of um, different person, they have different, uh, coming with a different uh, uh, issue to get help because the HIPAA, because the HIPAA thing too. So it, then but with the chat GPT, um, if you have like a, a Chinese medicine practitioner looking at all the cases and then hope this chat, chat GPT can learn. So then they more can answer patients uh, more accurately give them more accurate answers this is the one way chat gpt can working with uh chinese medicine another way is uh, um with my it background i know how when we're talking about uh, linear and then um secular when we're talking about linear just like when we have like a one a system okay when we have a system a computer with one device talking to one device we can program it and then with our hardware it works perfectly but when we have like one computer work with multiple device uh we will always got issues so you for those uh, hardware software components or wires cables together it's not always working the same as what we expected. Uh, and then we got issue, could be that issue is a small hardware issue or it's a software issue, but uh, when it's combining a system, we can view like uh, it's, we, human is such a complicated uh, system. When, it, when you get into that kind of very complicated, um, thing it, it's very difficult to find the root cause you have to find the root cause when you find that root cause then it, the treatment to become easy because if you find the right root cause it's always if you go towards that direction you can always uh, uh, get the result the the uh, problems resolved in this case i don't think uh, chat gpt is really not able to handle uh, a complicated system like that. 
Okay, so that's my first question. Thank you very much. And my, I, I don't know if I should take other people's time, but my second question. No, actually, um, we have a lot of people lined up. If okay. you want to ask another question, you could type yes. exclamation point again. Sure. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Um, up next, I have Joe, followed by Carly and Denise. I'll, I'll defer to our participants until um, when their questions are exhausted, I can participate then. Okay. Um, up next, I have Carly, followed by Denise. Okay, I made it, thanks. Um, I really appreciate your talk. Thank you for the good information. I also agree that a change in lifestyle with healthy uh, non-processed foods that I cook at home, lots of hydration. I'm in Denver, Colorado, which is very dry. Um, also practices for good sleep, et cetera. I became vegetarian years ago to avoid antibiotics that I would consume accidentally in meat and noticed uh, better overall health. But facing more surgeries upcoming, I know I'm going to have to have antibiotics that the surgeons or doctors administer. Is there anything that I might do to counteract that or preemptively help? I've heard that fermented foods and probiotic prebiotics can help realign the microbiome that antibiotics can destroy in my gut. But have you any specific um, suggestions of what kind of herbs I might ask a local practitioner or uh, yeah, any foods in particular that I can stock up on or cook preventively or after surgery that might help? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much um, for antibiotic. It's really I looking to that not long ago. There is a brochure, right? Um, we we in US has a brochure talking about uh, antibiotics, and then uh, it's from hospital, I believe, has a brochure educate people. It, our antibiotic is not always good. So uh, when you take it, uh, have to be careful. And certainly we know it's not, uh, it, if you have cold or anything, it's not working. And then um, as what you said, like when you go into surgery, they will give you antibiotic. Those are not able to avoid. True, in Western medicine, when you go into hospital here, um, you cannot avoid, they will give you that. But it as from Chinese medicine um, perspective, we know it's not good. And then we see there are some issues, especially uh, for patient, for younger kids or for older people. Uh, Chinese medicine, talking about those um, yang yin and yang, right? Yang qi, that's your positive, your energy. Um, antibiotic from its property, um, we call it cold. And then um, it, when you're taking all those, it's actually sometimes uh, there are Chinese medicine talking about so then in, inside there are like a past and, uh, um Pathogenic, it's inside. When when it's inside, sometimes it's have to you have to um, make it to go outside. That's how you cause the disease. So sometimes those antibiotic, if you have too much, it's it's just like um, hold your those uh, pathogenic inside your body, not able to make them go out. Then they go with the cold cover it and then inside will make it uh, finally it will transform to the heart inside your body so that's not good um the way how you say you know it's not good and then uh, what food or what uh, herb medicine you can take it um because i don't know your um what surgery is you going to go through, right? It, it is Shoulder difficult. for a rotator cuff repair, yes. Oh, oh, okay. So 
I would say, generally speaking, just take some um, ginger, but um, that 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 trying to help, right? Um, say uh, maybe we can talking about that more um, after the meeting. Sure, thanks. I don't mean to take up time, but I appreciate it. So yeah, we'll get to other people's questions now. Right. Thank you. Uh, yeah, welcome. Thank you. Um, up next, I have Denise, uh, Becky, Joe, and YJH. Hi, this is Denise. Hello. Hi. Um, so I was paying attention to you when you were just dis um, discussing that reproductive issues for women are sometimes connected to like having cold trapped inside of the body. I'm I'm very interested about your knowledge when it comes to fibroid tumors, being that seventy percent of women are suffering from fibroid tumors at this time, and you know, in the United States. Um, I guess my sp specific question was, um, yes or no? Do you do you believe that acupuncture can help reduce the size of fibroid tumors? And do you know of any teas or herbal medicine um, through Chinese medicine that a woman should be taking to try to reduce the size of the tumors? Um, yes, um, I believe Chinese medicine can help, right? That's, that's a yes or no, yes, I do think. Uh, but then you say, uh, when you're coming, um, asking if there are general one, um, to drink, I I really um, I mean from a dietary supplement there are something you probably can take, but for general, uh, but then for uh, if you know a specific one, um, I think uh, I mean it's not for me to make recommendation. I will say recommend to see a Chinese medicine practitioner in your area. Okay, and your 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 business, would, would your business qualify for, under that category? Like if we wanted to try to go to your office for as a practitioner, like it's that, would that be sufficient? Or do you mean like somebody outside of your office I mean, if you are in Washington state, right? If you come into our office, that's certainly we are licensed. Um, but if you are not in our, not coming to our office, right? Not you going to other area in your area. I don't, you, you where are you at? At New York. Oh, in New York, right? New York has lots of like, uh, um, Licensed clinic, licensed acupuncture clinic, right? Well, this is the thing. Like, I I'm not sure if they all specialize in in women's like reproductive health and specifically the fibroid tumors. So, um, you, you know that one. Um, I know Chinese medicine is help hope a lot of patients. So we do have lots of those patients, and then. I also know other office clinics uh, hope for lots of patients like that. So it's like, uh, it's really, this is one of the area that Chinese medicine and acupuncture works very well. So uh, unless we do have patients coming from outside of the state, right? To come to our uh, clinic, but I mean, in. New York, I know they are uh, offices. They do working with this woman disease, and they works very well. I mean, I think uh, will work well with you, con your conditions too. Unless you want to me recommend you to some office in New York. I mean, yes, of course. I mean, if there's if there's um, a resource that you know actually. Of that um, would be okay. I'm sorry, I hate to interrupt, but we need to move on. Um, if you want to connect offline, you can, but we we have other people lined up. Yeah, you can connect with me uh, offline. 
that, um, I can um, let you know what's recommendation in New York. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Thank up next, I, you're welcome. Up next, I have Becky, Joe, Jing, and YJH. Um, okay, so uh, I just want to uh, start off by um, letting everyone know, like we are on recording, and so you know, try to be careful about um, disclosing personal health information. <laughs> Um, so, you know, just like a fair warning for everyone, but, um, but I really enjoyed the presentation, uh, both from Jang and Marlena. And, uh, one of the things I wanted to share about was like my own experience, um, you know, uh, growing up in a Chinese family and hearing about, um, a, a lot of these, uh, traditional teachings and because I was born uh, in the U.S., I naturally dismissed a lot of it as, um, you know, unscientific and, and all that. But um, as I uh, started going through my own medical issues, um, and similar to what Jeng had shared about her uh, her son uh, with some some eczema or um, some skin issues, like I. Uh, started seeing that the conventional medicine path uh, was not necessarily the right way for me. And I have done um, a lot of, you know, the typical medications, steroids, all that. Um, and now that I've gone the natural route, um, I've, I've actually learned a lot more. And uh, some of it has been... Um, the help of 52 living ideas and learning about how the um, the whole is not the sum of the parts and conventional medicine tends to focus on what is that one thing that's wrong and I really liked what Marlena said it's like well you might be c coming in to complain about stomach issues but there might be something else that um, you know you're looking at the holistic um, body and you're treating the holistic, like the whole. Um, and what, um, at least from my own experience is that uh, conventional medicine will, will deal with the, the, what's immediate, the symptom. So, you know, if I have, um, let's say high blood pressure, uh, I'll end up getting medication for high blood pressure, but that will only treat um, you know, will manipulate the numbers, but doesn't actually resolve uh, what's the what the underlying issue is that's causing high blood pressure. And so, um, so same thing with the skin uh, issues that uh, both probably uh, Jeng Sun and I had. It's like creams after creams and steroids, and it's like, well, you know, after a while the um, the side effects of a steroid is so is probably worse than just dealing with the skin condition. So, um, but yeah, it's it's interesting because my whole journey has brought me back to um, have a better appreciation um, for for what uh, my parents had taught me growing up about like well you know the the cooling foods versus the hot foods um, the heating foods and it all comes back to balance, which Marlena stressed. Like it's, it's all about balance. You know, if you're too comfortable, you need a little bit of stress in order to make yourself more resilient. And that's where like a cold shower comes in. But if you're too stressed and you have, let's say like um, hypothalamus, um, uh, uh, adrenal, um, uh, access fatigue, uh, where your cortisol is just like, you know, through the roof and your, your adrenal glands are shot. You don't want to take a cold shower because that's adding additional, um, uh, you know, stress on the body, which like you can't afford having more cortisol in your body. Um, and so it's all about balance and, um, and, uh, you know, to, to the question of Denise, like, you know, it sounds like there's a lot of hormone imbalance going on. And so, um, so, you know, it, I, I really liked um, Marlena's slide on the infertility and all that um, and how it's 
you know, related to cold. And I don't know if it's necessarily like um, saying, you know, it's it's cold um, uh, 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 with what Denise had mentioned, but it it is um, a it it there's there's correlation there, and it might even be that you know the hormone imbalance is resulting in something like either estrogen dominance or like a like a thyroid issue where it's manifesting as coldness. You know, you're not having your um, circulation, um, you know, uh, optimally performing. Um, your because your metabolism metabolism is probably slower, or um, or all that. So um, it all comes back to balance. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. Um, that was very informational. So really, thank you. We appreciate it. Up next, I have Joe followed by Jing and YJH. Yes, thank you, Marlena, actually, for coming here this evening. And as uh, I'm just going to echo some of the things that actually Becky had just mentioned, is that one of the things in the whole objective of these meetups, uh, this particular meetup, is to integrate some of the things that we have learned here at 52 Living Ideas and see how they can work out practically in our lives. So thinking holistically uh, is something that we thought about quite a bit. And we've done a lot of systems thinking uh, in general uh, analysis. So it's it's something that uh, it's, it's a real uh, honor to have you here um, because uh, you're, you're bringing us a, uh, a, a different perspective on our health. And I think it's an important perspective. Uh, one thing I, I wanted to, to maybe uh, ask about, maybe you could ex, uh, expand on, but and it kind of gets to what Becky was saying, this root cause analysis. And um, sometimes uh, the anxiety issues that we were, when you were covering in one of the slides, um, that can be uh, a, uh, a situational or societal um, issue uh, where there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot, if you're in a uh, situation where um, there are high demands, then that can induce anxiety. Uh, so, so how do you necessarily, is it, is it sometimes our ailments are culturally specific? So they could be the, the, the uh, situation that you're in. How does then uh, how do you approach treating an individual that comes in with anxiety that is just in a high stress situation? Because sometimes I think that this is a, often a problem with Western medicine is that we often throw medication. Okay, you're stressed. Well, you, you know, you're in a very stressful situation, right? So how would a more Eastern and holistic approach towards medicine, uh, towards uh, uh, treatment, uh, uh, you know, approach somebody with that's, that's coming to you where you can actually, uh, you know, see the situation is maybe driving the, the problem, uh, versus say, again, uh, a more Western approach is to more times than not, it may involve, uh, medication or may not, could, there's also, um, uh, different types of therapies like cognitive behavioral therapies and all those other things that can help reduce stress uh, that aren't necessarily uh, uh, related to medication. But I was just curious to get your thoughts on that in particular. Uh, thank you, Joe. Uh, yes, uh, just uh, for you, this one uh, as example, right? To change the medicine, it's really just about acupuncture and herbs, right? It is about um, what we're we talking about. It's the self-care part and then the treatment part. So it has the other part like uh, uh, Tai Chi and then also the meditation on all those the diet. That's another part of like even about the Feng Shui, which how you live. Um, that's uh, the other part of the Chinese medicine. So yes, when... Um, we have patients coming with those anxiety issue that definitely uh, many of them have a trigger. So 
when people are under the stress, right? That's a part of the diagnosis when uh, Chinese medicine practitioner or doctor talking to you, they were trying to find out uh, what's the cause, so what's the reason, that's why we will ask, we, we would ask in patients, then we will understand what happened at their work and then kind of get a general understanding of what happened, like their family issue and then there's like a, a work related issue or like a social issue, right? Um, this is a part we know Chinese medicine by itself, if only the herb or only acupuncture, it's not working at its uh, optimum mice. There is the other the way another part is like a, um, psychology, psychology part of it. So they say a really good uh, Chinese medicine doctor, it's not just a, a, a very experienced one. It's not just like a, how good you use the herbs and acupuncture. It's also psychologically how you help people. We do for some situation, <laughs> really we know that people lead, um, sometimes will trying to figure out a way working with like uh, people's family, right? Or like a work, even doctor will say, okay, here, like uh, you got stress, no, at a family issue. And so we will get to talking to their family member, right? And then trying to get a family member to working on those things or how they can help the patient or how can they help the person. And then here is a work-related issue. Then we certainly understand patient we're talking about. They are so stressful at work or those things. And then so there is a way we actually um, was well talking to whoever or we talking to patient directly or someone around it give let them realize let them realize uh, what is the cause here's the cause and then what they can do with it or like uh, how uh, besides the herbs the herbs definitely we give to the person and help them but then uh, with the acupuncture, but then there is uh, that part of uh, psychologically. We, we talk to patient, help them to realize it. And then um, certainly we always tell, tell patients, it's not like uh, the treatment you get here in the clinic, in the office. It's also how you want to help yourself. It's always that part. You work with your um, doctors. Thank you so much, actually, and uh, I'll come back to some other things as well, but uh, I'll you. let uh, other people cover us. Thanks. Okay. Uh, up next, I have Jing followed by YJH, and if anybody else has any questions or comments, you can type exclamation point in the chat or raise your hand in Zoom. Hi, Malila. Thanks so much for the great presentation. Yeah, I really like in the beginning, you were talking about how the Chinese medicine work with Tai Chi, you know, all the other things. I think that's very related to what Joe was asking, because it's not just the treat, treat the, you know, the illness, it's the lifestyle. That's why we learned Dao De Jing, you know, the reason we have so much stress, we live in this environment, high stress environment, but how we counter effect that. Maybe with learning the Dao, you know, we know everything should go with the flow instead of like we resisted that <laughs> we can reduce the stress. <laughs> and also, I just think, you know, it's so interesting. The Chinese history, we have this Chinese medicine, Chinese philosophy, and I believe India has it too. India have their own natural treatment and have their own Gita. And there's just so much knowledge, wisdoms in the years, thousand years of history, but it's unfortunate we kind of ignore it. And then we build this brand new Western medicine, which is beneficial for a lot of things, but we lost this, it's such a, and so I'm very excited about, we're talking about study this group, group study of Yellow Empire's work. I think everybody need to learn some of the knowledge so to equip with that 
that will be so much beneficial for us and for the families members, you know, all around us. I have one question is like, is it, do you think it's possible with telemedicine for Chinese medicine? Because I know you have to look at the, the pulse, which is hard to do. And also observation is hard to do with the video because we I actually see a Chinese medicine doctor through a friend recommendation in California, I paid a lot of money and didn't work at all. And it's actually making it very worse. I was very mad. <laughs> and I thought, why he even charged me to do it? <laughs> so of course, you know, I think it's hard to do. Yeah, I just like to hear your opinion. Thank you again uh, to bring up that question. It's really a good question. Uh, for the past uh, few years, so we have go, we've been go through COVID-19, right? When it's COVID-19, so we become a telemedicine. I mean, insurance allowed Chinese medicine um, to have like a telemedicine too. Um, but what we did is we do only see patient with COVID-19 on through the telemedicine like a, by Zoom or by other online. Um, that, that works fine because it's only for COVID-19, right? And uh, for actually my father, uh, he is a uh, supervisor for a uh, school here, for a uh, Chinese medicine school here. So the COVID-19 time, they have like uh, make their clinic online too. So COVID-19 patient, uh, they been go, uh, when supervisor uh, asking question and doesn't give their herbs, then all like uh, uh, students interest is joined. Everyone joined the Zoom meeting. They are listening and then following the supervisors. Um, it works very good because this is the own, this is the way you cannot feel the pulse of the patient. You can only hear what they talk, tell you, right? But uh, with the experienced uh, uh, practitioners, they know how to ask questions, how to uh, inquiry patients, get the full pictures, so or at least try to have the full pictures, right? You cannot smell, you can see the color, definitely you can see the tongue. That's another important part of the Chinese medicine. You get, get to say um, their tongue, the tongue going to tell you what's the uh, really root cause of them or with the pulse. Sometimes the pulse, you should just follow the pulse, sometimes follow the tongue. Then in, they made it very restrict only the COVID-19 um, patients. But I, uh, there are so at the time so many patients they, with other conditions, they want to just see us so through te telemedicine. Uh, we say the no. We say the no. It's just because right you uh, through the telemedicine you cannot feel the pulse. Sometimes the color because they are inside or maybe under the light or getting dark, you cannot feel like they, they know the true conditions. So sometimes uh, you, if you don't know those four conditions, you may not give the patients the correct diagnosis. Um, so uh, for some particular conditions, like COVID-19, basically we know what's the root cause, and then we know what mostly sometimes they have. So it's easy for uh, us to give them the herb medicine that we will help them quickly because I'd say time like people all over the world, they're trying to do the telemedicine. Uh, but for other conditions, we, we just say, no, you should just go to your uh, Chinese medicine in your local area. Then they, they, that way you can get better help. Thank you, that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, up next, I have YJH followed by Joe. Hello, uh, I have another question here. Uh, yeah. Let's continue to my early question with the IT background, because I know a lot of practitioners that they are practiced very, very early age and you seem to practice later on uh, in your life, so after you have science background. So my question was, if I'm interested in to change my routing to become a TCM practitioner, 
what do you think the science background will be beneficial in what aspect from your perspective? Thank you. Uh -huh. Good, right. Um, I actually um, have my acupuncture um, degree or uh, education from early of my life. Um, I got my education in China, and then I came from a background that uh, uh, my family is doing the acupuncture and Chinese medicine, right? So since I'm in kind of born to that kind of a family, but I do have friends. I really uh, see other people with the IT background after they've been in IT e e industry for 10, 20 years, and then they change it to um, be interested in TCM and then become a uh, licensed acupuncturist. Uh, for them, I think uh, when you have this scientific background, uh, yes, uh, you have really good logic when, with all this very good foundation of logic. When you kind of adopt yourself to that uh, Chinese medicine thinking, it's, it is very difficult. It, it is very different. I mean, that Chinese medicine thinking is very different. Sometimes if you use scientific logic, you really feel like that doesn't make sense. But after you able to cross that, I mean, if you are able to cross that door or whatever, then all those things, when you make that connect, it will make sense to you. And then um, with the scientific background, IT background, you are trained. I think when you explain the, uh, you, when you explain to your patients, it's really uh, will be, easy for you to connect you to your patients because your patients mostly they um uh go through the school right um they will have the same logic then you will understand your patients much better you are able to explain to them better too okay thank you you're welcome thank you uh thank you up next i have joe if anyone else has any questions or comments, you can type exclamation point in the chat or raise your hand in Zoom. Joe, you're up. Now, one of the things uh, that I I think that's interesting about Eastern medicine is too, is you were just about to hit on it when we were actually um, uh, at the end of our last exchange was the role of the patient. Um, and that there is, when you're taking a holistic approach, that the role of the patient is uh, is critical in that they have to become uh, you know, more self-aware, self-aware of their environment. Uh, they are taking more of a proactive approach as to how they're taking care of themselves. Um, and, and, and there's a sense of personal responsibility that's, that's involved uh, that, that exists. So I was wondering you actually, if you could expand a little bit on the relationship aspect that between your patients and yourself in the sense that it's more of a, uh, it, 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 you're putting a lot of uh, responsibility on on the patient themselves to to actually change their lifestyle, um, to live a more healthier and pro, you know, more of a proactive approach towards their health versus a reactive approach. Uh, so I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about how your relationship with your patients may be a little different than say uh, a, a Western. Uh, doctors, which is more of a, let's just say, reactive. A uh, very good point, Joe. Um, it, you know, I think uh, this is some um, thing about uh, what well, I mean. What well, Chinese medicine um, as a small clinic right now, every Chinese medicine clinic is a small clinic. Uh, it is not a hospital. That means you don't have that many staff works as a small clinic, right? Um, in in China, it's different. Uh, in China, it's like uh, you have like a Chinese medicine hospital too. Um, in here in the US, we're talking about, yes, uh, we talk about two patients, they have to take a, a like a, 
their expectation, what the doctor expects you to do, but really how make a patient able to uh, change. I was, uh, if, if it's like something I would say we want to improve, it's like, um, uh, I would like we have more time to do follow up with the patients. Uh, in addition to general education, right? And in addition to general education, I would like uh, we have more time to do follow up with our patients at least. But uh, realistically, for small clinic, we have lots of patients. Even I tried, yes. I tried to use all different channel to follow up with my patients. I don't feel it's enough. Okay. Another thing is my father been practice for many years. So he is a very uh, experienced uh, uh, practitioner. Uh, one thing in Chinese medicine uh, practice is saying like, uh, you don't go ask a patient you really wait for your patient come to you. That means like uh, when they really got into a step, they want to get help. Then that way they realize it. So that you'll get a much better results because the patient realize they really need help and then they will working with you, right? So then they will be more proactive. In some cases, we do have the patients coming first when they come in um, to us. Even we point out here, you can get the help, please keep coming. Then they will like, uh, uh, they because there are some choice, so they will choose, choose a different way going to the Western medicine. But after a year or two years, it didn't work. Then they were coming back. When they come back to the office, certainly the situation got worse, but they will have much more, like uh, they realize this is like uh, important thing for them. And then here is the issue. Uh, they will work much better, I mean, with you. Mm, oh, you know, this is um, two side. I think one is like a clinic. I wish clinic we have can have like a, a more staff or like a doctor really don't have that much time when doctor have to think and say so many patients. Um, but we should have like a, a staff nurse able to do follow up with patients can help them. Sometimes they really need that type of the out of the office help. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, welcome. Thank you, Marlena. Uh, does Last chance for questions and or comments. If you have a question and or a comment, you can type that exclamation point in the chat or raise your hand in Zoom. Otherwise, we will go over upcoming events. Can I have one more question? Um, good. And now go ahead. I have one as well. Okay. okay. So uh, um, if later I have more questions with Dr. Can I? Or get got doctor's contact or search her on the internet and then um, make appointment or something to chat. Is that a possible? That's fine with me. That's okay, fine. Thank you me. very much. Really appreciate your time and help. Thank you. Joe, did you want to go? Yeah, actually, I, I mean, we have a, just a couple of minutes left and, and I was just wondered to ask just from a curiosity perspective. Um, how have insurance companies kind of changed? Uh, I've noticed kind of a little bit of a change in that regard as far as their approach to actually accepting uh, Western or Eastern uh, or holistic medicine as uh, is a valid approach. And, and so is that improving with the uh, essential general awareness um, that it's a holistic approach can be actually helpful? Um, in the sense that uh, as far as um, uh, maybe long-term costs associated with the patient. Thank you, Joe, for that's a really good question. Joe, for even talking about that, it can really be another meeting. Um, insurance mm -hmm. certainly uh, re recently realized this alternative medicine 
really can saving the, the cost saving for the whole country, for the state and for individuals. Uh, we have like uh, for seniors, like there are more in, insur there are insurance company cover acupuncture, yes. So they mostly they cover like uh, 12 times, generally speaking, 12 to 24 times per year. Okay. And then they don't cover herbs. The part for Chinese herbs, they don't cover it because it's not, it's not drug, right? So, but uh, herbs itself not cost that much. So patients coming, they are always like uh, able to get 70, I would say 70% 70 of our patients have the insurance cover for acupuncture. Um, but uh, seniors, even like now for Medicare, they say it's like uh, uh, for lower back pain, you can get acupuncture treatment because that's everyone else, um, for, especially for senior, for lower back pain, those things, uh, they cost a lot of like, they have a hippo issue, they have a walking issue, all because of the lower back pain. Um, even Medicare said uh, they can get acupuncture treatment to, 12 times per year, but they didn't tell people is that they need to go into a physician office. A physician office, if the physician office decided they will do acupuncture, then, then Medicare will cover it. But if you go into a licensed acupuncturist office, uh, uh, all like acupuncturists are not under the um, Medicare system. Uh, so Medicare not going to pay for that part. They, but if you are Medicare Advantage plan senior patient, uh, yes, you got like uh, some acupuncture treatment as your uh, kind of for Advantage plan. That means you don't get other plan. You are have good general good health. In that case, you get to, you can get to acupuncture. Um, paid 12 times a year for your like general care. So the Medicare system, there are lots of um, issues that we really uh, need more. Um, it, it's difficult that for alternative medicine, even it really works on those conditions can help people. We have senior people, they don't, they have very good Medicare coverage. If you have uh, part A, B, and then part E, F, those very good coverages. And if you have very good coverage, they don't cover acupuncture. Um, this is like a, a thing probably need like years of work to get a, more people to low and then everyone knows it need a lobby to working on it too. Um, that's about uh, insurance and the insurance sometimes they change in their policy. Uh, we have patients coming to comply. The insurance said they have better coverage, but oh, they suddenly find this year they don't have coverage for acupuncture. So insurance is a really a big, uh, um, it's a big layer that adding to every small acupuncture clinic, we have to have someone to deal with the insurance coverage. It's a big um, burden on every small clinic. Thank you. Yeah, it is a meetup onto itself. So very much appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Marlena. Up next, I have Jane. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Marlena. I think, <laughs> uh, yeah, Jill had a great question because I think the reason I invite Marlena here is to bring more awareness about the Chinese medicine and other alternative medicine because I think we all experience the insurance, you know, like come, doesn't work for our health. Like they cover the things that's when you're dying. But there's no way to reverse it. When you get so sick that you're going to die, then they treat all this, they cover all this surgery. 
but would be for all the preventive care, which can be more cost effective, can right. create better quality of life and not covered. And I know Melina is very active actually promoting the Chinese medicine and all the kind of like signing the bills. And I know he, she is passionate to bring more awareness. That's why I invite her. I said, you know, not just promoting Chinese community, we need more Westerners to know about it. Because to a lot of Chinese, we, we learn from our parents or other people, it's easier to accept the concept. I think for Westerner, it's even harder. So I think I, I'm glad we at this introduction, she bring more knowledge to more people, show them the alternative way that will create higher quality of life, physical health for everybody, you know. So I really appreciate this. Um, Melina is such a great lecture for us. Thank you. It's uh, everyone's effort together. So uh, then people will know alternative medicine, right? So then they know there are more options when they need help. Yeah, and then so in that way, if they got help, say it works, so more people will work together um, to make more aware uh, awareness of the alternative medicine. Thank you, Marlena. Uh, thank you so much for coming and for preparing the presentation and for answering everyone's questions and for your time. Um, it is so it was so educational and um, so we thank you for that. Thank you for coming. Um, so now I'm just going to do a quick uh, uh, a couple of announcements before we head out. So um, just letting you know about a couple of things that are happening this weekend with 52 Living Ideas. So uh, tomorrow at 5 p.m., um, 52 Living Ideas and Asian Philosophies, which is the group led by Jason Ping, uh, is doing um, a meetup on studying uh, Zhuangzi, the happy excursion. And sorry, that was a motorcycle. Um, and that is Saturday at 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Um, and that's on the 52 Living Ideas page. And then on Sunday at 5 p.m., uh, we are reading classic plays of all time. And this Sunday will be Les Sit by Pierre Corn Cornell. Um, and that would that will be at 5 p.m. as well on Sunday, uh, Eastern Daylight Time. And then at 9 p.m., uh, it's our Bucky Fuller series. Um, and this one is titled The Man, His Thoughts and What He Offers. And Joe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's gonna be, there's an hour video to watch. Um, there's an interview with Bucky Fuller and then we're gonna have a discussion on that. That's correct. Uh, yeah, so there'll be, there's an hour long video uh, link that's on the web page uh, for that specific meetup, and um, we will uh, discuss that that video. I have not watched it yet, so I can't comment on what it's about. So I'll figure. It. Okay, so and that's what we have going on this weekend. So um, thank you everybody for coming and spending your Friday nights with us. Um, and with that, have a great night. Good night, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Melina.